Two days ago, credit rating agency Fitch downgraded the federal debt. Are we moving from the gradually stage to the suddenly stage? Fitch is one of the big three credit rating outfits, together with Moody's and S&P, and they dropped the federal government from their highest rating, AAA, to their second highest, AA+, adding they see a, quote, steady deterioration that could suggest more cuts to come if nothing improves. Now, given the federal deficit is up 170% on last year alone, in all likelihood, nothing will improve. The proximate cause of the downgrade, of course, was rising federal debt. Fitch estimates it will hit 118% of GDP by 2025, which is more than two and a half times the AAA country median of 39%. So it was already a friend rating. Fitch cited the repeated last minute debt ceiling standoffs amid 20 years of deterioration in quote fiscal and debt matters. Biden's staff added that January 6th was a factor which Fitch didn't mention in their report, but extra points for creativity. Note, this kind of downgrade did happen once before in the 2011 debt ceiling clash, that time by S&P. Because our nation is governed by laws, two weeks later, the federal government opened an investigation whether S&P caused the 2008 mortgage crisis, at which point S&P fired its CEO. So that was just 18 days from downgrade to unemployment. Even NBC, which wasn't quite as bootlicky back then, connected the dots and questioned the timing. So we will see if any Fitch executives get that pink slip, but so far the administration has, of course, strongly disagreed with the downgrade, with Janet Yellen saying Fitch used, quote, outdated numbers, to which Zero Hedge responded, yes, they are outdated. Debt payments have actually doubled to roughly $1 trillion, and the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, is now projecting a $50 trillion national debt. So what is the impact of the downgrade? In theory, higher interest rates on government debt, meaning a rise in that $1 trillion we already spend on debt service, itself on track to $1.6 trillion this year, if federal debt is now risky, that makes investors nervous, so they require higher rates, which could push us towards $2 trillion in debt service. By the way, the entire federal government only collects about twice that, $4.8 trillion, meaning almost half of every tax dollar could soon go to servicing, not paying off mine, just servicing old debt. Still, it is worth noting that last time in 2011, the opposite happened. Stocks fell, but treasuries in the dollar actually rose in a flight to safety typical of any crisis. So near term, that could happen again, even if longer term is a weaker dollar and higher debt interest. The fundamental issue here is that the U.S. government is, drink is spending like a drunk sailor with a stolen credit card. They're also drinking like drunk sailors. And even intimidation of credit rating agencies is not hiding the fact. I would not hold my breath for anything to change. The feds will just pay any higher interest with yet more debt. As always, accelerating the crash instead of fixing it, kicking that can over and over until you kick it and it doesn't budge. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.